What's up guys? I'm gonna show you some ways that I bulletproof my knees to be healthy, stable, strong, and able to do cool things like this. The knees require a solid foundation, so that's where we're gonna start. If any of the structures surrounding the knee are tight or in a compromised position, it can actually pull the patella out of the trochlear groove, causing knee pain and inability to run, squat, jump, or just perform to optimum levels. The first step here is gonna be intentional foam rolling. I'm really focused on the outside of the femur or the leg bone where the iliotibial band runs as well as just behind it where the biceps femoris is. And then you'll see me shift onto the front where the quadriceps and the rectus femoris are. These are some of the largest muscles and tendons that cross the knee. So as you can imagine, if there's any tightness or scar tissue built up in them, they can have a big impact on how the patella tracks, which leads to knee pain or just agitation of the knees. Make sure you're breathing here, find those sticky spots and lean into them a little bit deeper. It's a hurt so good type of pain, but when these structures get released, your knees will really start to thank you. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you a workout that incorporates all these exercises with the specifics on the sets, reps, and amount of time for each that I've used to bulletproof my knees. In the second step, we're targeting the roots of our foundation. So we're looking at the ankles and the feet, making sure that we can absorb shock correctly and it doesn't just get sent straight up to the knees. So here I'm working on some calf raises, pushing through my big toe and gauging the flexor hallucis longus, which is one of the longer muscles in the body that doesn't have enough emphasis put on it. It's extremely important with any exercises that are pushing off the ball of the foot, and you're gonna notice more glute activation with it. Next, I'm gonna bend the knee, which is gonna incorporate more of the soleus muscle. It lies just underneath the big meaty part of your calves, and it's more of your endurance muscle, and it also aids in stability. Ultimately, this is going to help us absorb and redistribute shock through the ankles via the Achilles tendon. This way, we don't send that shock up to the knees when we're running, jumping, walking, or even weightlifting. To progress this movement, we want to develop control in positions that are less stable. So moving from doing it with two feet and your hand on something to doing it with one foot and your hand on something, and then eventually to just doing it on one foot fully with your own balance. This next move is called the poliquin step up. I like to think of it as more of a step down and using the knee to control the step down. How you set this up is you put your heel in an elevated position. This could be on a curb, it could be on a yoga block, it could be on a slant board like you see here. And then you're lowering the other leg, keeping your body upright, touching your heel on the ground. This is gonna load the VMO, the vastus medialis oblique, which is a heavy stabilizer in the knees. If you're not already working this muscle and you start to implement this, you're gonna see progress very quickly. Just be aware though, when you do target the VMO, you're gonna be sore. The knee stabilizers require a little bit more focus, so be sure that you're taking deep breaths, bracing the core, keep the torso nice and upright. The key here is gonna be good form. If you do struggle with stability in the planted leg, make sure you check out my How to Fix Flat Feet video, which is in the upper right-hand corner. It's gonna help you increase proprioception and control in the ankles, which will really help with these movements. Step five is gonna include a few different squat variations which are done on a slant board. I'll put the names of the variations in the video itself, so you can check those out if you wanna try them. I would start with just a bodyweight squat. Essentially here, we want the heels to be elevated. If you have a slant board, that's great, use it. If you don't, you can put your heels on a set of weights, on a two by four, on a small yoga block, we really want to get the knees tracking out over the toes. This is a safe position as long as you maintain control in the position. It's going to feel a little different than a normal squat. That's what we want though. We want to tell the body that, hey, this position is accessible to you and it's okay to use. Now that we've unlocked the range of motion with the ankles and the knees, we need to train it. Take your time in these positions. You can add tempo if you want to, isometric holds. I'll list all of these at the end of the video in a routine that you can do. Here's another variation that I like to do. It's a pistol squat. I'm controlling myself all the way down. I'll move forward into full ankle range of motion. I move back and then I press up through the heel, full engagement of the glutes as I come to the top. This is extremely difficult and it is a full body movement. As promised, here's two different workout templates. One is gonna be more of a beginner style, and the second one is gonna be intermediate to advanced as long as you've mastered the beginner movements. 
I recommend doing these two to three times per week as an independent workout. You could also add on a major movement exercise at the end of those, like a lunge or a squat, to further emphasize this pattern. If you found this video beneficial, make sure you support the channel by hitting the subscribe button. Drop a like if you have any questions or other topics that you want addressed. Make sure you put them down in the comments. Check out some of the other content on the page, and I'll see you next time for more content.